In futuristic Russia, a couple of rich Muscovites journey to a mysterious facility for its alleged benefits, unknowingly unlocking cosmic powers that plunge their lives into chaos. The Minister of Natural Resources, Victor, prepares for work while discussing his day with Chao, a Chinese journalist. He emphasizes the luxuries that he uses to extend his life, while his wife, Zoya, uses a mask believed to slow down aging. As they eat, the minister mentions wanting to restore the relationship, but Zoya avoids the topic. Instead, she asks why the Chinese are interested in a book about him. Victor responds that it's because of his position in the government, making him the king of the mountains. Despite his wife's polite disinterest, Victor leaves in a positive mood. After a meeting regarding the World Expo, Victor discreetly observes the departing bureaucrats using a pair of glasses that measure their inherent levels of goodness and evil. When he returns home, Zoya prepares his dinner and leaves him to eat alone. Later, Victor approaches her in the shower, but she withdraws from his touch. Her husband is convinced that Zoya no longer loves him, but he remains hopeful that their planned trip will repair what went wrong. As they get ready for an event, she asks Victor about the trip, but he intentionally keeps the details vague. However, he assures her that she won't need to wear her mask afterward. Victor puts on his glasses, and Zoya asks about their ratings. He replies that her rating is 74% goodness, and he is 69%. However, Zoya doubts its accuracy and questions the existence of such technology. Victor defends it, stating that nothing in the world can't be quantified. At their event, they sit next to another couple, Audrey and Katya, to participate in the game show hosted by Zoya's brother, Michia. After some fanfare, Mintia announces the start of this evening's horse racing. The outcome leads to Victor and Zoya winning, and the former graciously offers half of their winnings to Andre. The other couple then admits that they gambled away everything they had. Nevertheless, Andre remains optimistic that they can earn the money back. Following the race, Victor and Zoya meet with Nikolai, the jockey who rode their winning horse. They discover that he's also a lieutenant colonel in the Mobile Customs Unit, responsible for monitoring goods traveling to and from China. During their celebration, Mitya informs the couple that Nikolai will join them on tomorrow's trip, believing the jockey brought them good luck. In the same room, the losing couple remains in a somber mood. Hoping to help, Victor gives Andre a calling card, advising him to contact the number if they find themselves in dire need. Still, Andre insists that they'll be fine. When Mitya returns home, he listens to a podcast that teaches beginner Chinese by Anna Zivers. He continues listening to it during the flight the next day. After arriving in Mongolia, they transfer to a helicopter that takes them to a location known for its clear skies. Valerka picks them up in a small van and drives them to a settlement called Bombay. The group settles into the only hostel, where Mitya hears a familiar voice. Curious, he follows the voice to another room and discovers Anna Zivers, who also recognizes him. The host admits to listening to her beautiful voice daily, delighting in their encounter serendipity. Afterward, the group makes their way to Bombay's Seoul restaurant, where they're attended to by the beautiful Taya, who claims to be 52 years old despite her youthful appearance. Shortly after, Valerka takes them to their destination. Vitalik and his friend accompany them, explaining that they're heading to an abandoned astrophysical facility called Mission. They finally reach Mission, a large, flat disk in the middle of nowhere designed to collect and study space particles. The group is lowered into the center, which resembles a well where they spend the night. At dawn, the group is fetched and driven back to Bombay. During the ride, Nikolai asks about the cosmic radiation that Mission intended to accumulate. Mitya explains that it's esoteric concepts of life force, such as chi and prana. Vitalik informs them that they'll feel the urge to fall asleep again, and everything will seem extremely funny when they wake up. True to his words, the group falls asleep upon returning. Later, at the restaurant, Anna recites the 48th hexagram of I Ching, referring to a well that remains eternal but can bring misfortune when its rope runs out or its jug breaks. They later burst into laughter at Taya's pronunciation of the popular brand Chibo. Anna jokes that she might die from laughter, and the villager cheerfully assures them that the people rarely die in Bombay, unless it's an accident. Moments later, their helicopter arrives, so Taya requests to go back to Moscow with them. In their cheerful mood, Zoya agrees. Nikolai offers to pay the bill, but Vitalik doesn't have any change, and his brash behavior leads to the jockey hitting him in frustration. Then, Nikolai helps Vitalik up and apologizes. During their helicopter ride, Anna is exuberant upon seeing the beam of light focused on mission, triggering a childhood memory when something similar happened while with her mother. Upon arriving in Moscow, Zoya invites Taya to stay with them. When they return home, Victor finally has the opportunity to touch his wife once again, 
thus making their trip worth it. Basking in the afterglow, Victor shares his fantasy of being worthless and filthy, yet Zoya will still come back to him. He expresses that this is all he needs to die happily. Elsewhere, Anna and Mitya are in a similar situation. The host shares that he heard about a mission when he was young and eavesdropped on the adult's conversation during his father's birthday. This was when he discovered that the young man who had been repairing the roof was actually 42 years old and had previously served time in prison. He claimed to have worked at a secret facility with a dish that caused him and the lady he was with to stop aging. Although Mitya forgot about the story, when a journalist later told him about the mission, he instantly believed it to be true. Anna shares that she learned about the mission at a resort she frequents for her treatment. She opens up about having a rare disease that had her confined for seven years. She busied herself by learning Chinese but yearned to regain the lost time. When she heard about Mission, it sparked hope to recover her lost childhood. However, she wonders about Mitya's motivations. The host explains that after living a bachelor's life, he suddenly found himself feeling old. He confesses that he can't stomach waking up with someone in the same bed, as the only thing he truly loves is listening to Anna's podcast, much to her delight. Elsewhere, Nikolai is at work when he contacts Zoya. As he weaves between trucks, he arranges a meeting with her and she readily agrees. While on the phone, he brazenly carries out a scam targeting semi-trucks that lack government insurance. This time, he targets a semi-truck loaded with memory chips, which he sells after taking the truck to their service area. Following the scam, Nikolai makes his way to Zoya using a helicopter. While together, she confesses that she had an affair two years ago, but now all she has are fantasies, including one involving a forceful encounter. Within moments, Zoya begins unbuttoning the officer's uniform. The married couple throws a party days later, though Victor's behavior is unusually blunt. Meanwhile, Mitya behaves childishly, and although his playfulness bothers the guests, Anna still supports him. The minister begins looking for Zoya, asking Taya if she's seen his wife. He then mentions his overwhelming happiness, and she reassures him that he'll get accustomed to the feeling. Meanwhile, near the docks, Zoya and Nikolai engage in another illicit rendezvous. Later, as the group collapses from playing, Zoya expresses a sense of boundless possibility, as if everything is theirs for the taking. Taya adds that the life force enhances growth, similar to rain-nourishing plants. However, she cautions that bad things can grow too, along with overconfidence. During a business trip, Victor is shown a facility that converts volcanic gas into a rare element called runium. As the Minister of Natural Resources, he's given the privilege of witnessing the creation of three runium nuggets. When the nuggets are presented to him, Victor brazenly pockets two, the value of which is equivalent to a ton of gold. The minister nonchalantly walks away, leaving the director of the facility stunned. While at work, Nikolai invites Zoya for a day of hunting. Unable to talk with her mask on, she writes on her leg that she loves animals. Her paramour quickly assures her that no animals will get hurt, and she shows him her appreciation. Meanwhile, Victor distributes his judgment glasses to the bureaucrat at the ministry. He demonstrates their use by presenting two oars, one predominantly blue and the other red. The minister explains that there are no morally neutral substances, and even similar objects can possess different ethical qualities, where the red signifies goodness. He demonstrates that evil is contagious, emphasizing the importance of using good whenever possible. Considering this, he then leaves his audience to contemplate his words. Elsewhere, Nikolai takes Zoya to his workplace on the highway, explaining that this road serves as the circulatory system of Russia, transporting essential resources throughout the country. His concept of hunting unfolds when his team spots a semi-truck carrying illicit immigrants. As they await its arrival, he remarks that he's a lucky devil, as nothing bad ever happens to him. Now in his office, Victor notices that the picture of his wife reflects pure goodness. But the devices he uses to contact her are depicted as evil, which then taints the picture and his hand. During this realization, Chow calls, but Victor is too bothered by the corruption to continue their interview. On the highway, they find the semi-truck open with people running out on the field. Nikolai and Zoya get on an ATV and proceed to hunt the immigrants. Night falls and the activity arouses Zoya, so Nikolai satisfies her. Soon, Taya, Zoya, and Anna are out on a spa day. The doubtful women ask her for her real age, but Taya flatly reiterates that she's 52. She explains that she visited Mission at 19 and has stopped aging since. She adds that the ladies have stopped aging too. Later, they briefly lose sight of Taya, which scares Zoya as she thinks the woman has been lying to them and has run away. When they finally find her, Zoya shakes her, demanding to know who she really is. The villager responds that she's nobody since Mission purified her from within, leaving only emptiness. 
Taya emphasizes the significance of this, comparing mission to a cork. If one isn't empty, the pressure inside builds up until it becomes unbearable. On another day, Mitya is hosting his game show with two teams competing in a cooking challenge. As they cook, the host interviews them about happiness, pitting the contestants' personal lives against each other. Eventually, the game show devolves into a food fight, which the host justifies by declaring that combining their dishes represents European unity and equal happiness for all. Anna finds the situation amusing and laughs along with Mitya. Later, as Mitya rests on Anna's lap, she opens up about a sense of peace that's welling up within her. However, she confides that it's becoming overwhelming and rotten. The podcaster then shares that being with him feels like finally finding solace after drifting at sea for a long time. Meanwhile, at the minister's residence, they're enjoying an extravagant dinner. He presents Zoya with earrings made of runium he had taken. As his wife goes to change her clothes to match the earrings, Victor is drawn to Taya, who's wearing Zoya's dress and perfume. Soon, he succumbs to his desires. Afterward, Victor explains that he's accustomed to taking whatever he wants, much like how he took Zoya. Moments later, his wife returns and hands Taya one of the earrings. As they wear them, the two appear like mirror images on each other. During dinner, Victor uses his glasses to assess their character, finding nothing amiss. He then passes Taya the glasses, explaining that red represents good and blue represents evil. Through this, she remarks that good dominates their city. The next day, Zoya rushes to Nikolai's home, consumed by her desire to see him. The jockey reciprocates, stating that he wants to start fresh with her. At her request, the jockey takes Zoya to see the horses. He releases them, and they both enjoy a brief ride. On another day, the friends go horse riding with Nikolai's horses, and Victor admires the majestic animals. They head to a restaurant afterward, where Taya explains that the mission is like a jug that contains light. When someone absorbs that light, it starts to boil inside them. Later, the villager discreetly slips away amid their festivities. Anna notices her departure and follows. In the bathroom, she finds Taya getting ready to meet a man at the Bolshoi Theater. He used to guard Mission, and they entered it together when she was 19. In the aftermath of their exposure, it drove him to hijack a plane, resulting in his imprisonment. They met again in Bombay, but their intense passion caused them to harm each other. They made a pact to meet again after 30 years, hoping that once the intensity had subsided, they could assess if they still desired a relationship. Before leaving, Taya gives the runium earring to Anna without any explanation. The podcaster returns to the group and informs them about Taya's departure, receiving a lukewarm response. At the Bolshoi Theater, Taya patiently waits until the repairman from Mitya's childhood appears, and the two walk off in each other's arms. On another day, Victor talks to Xiao, though his words are laden with sadness. In front of him lies Zoya's mask, accompanied by a note revealing her choice to be with Nikolai. Meanwhile, Zoya is at Nikolai's farm, speaking to him on the phone in a state of hysteria as she has just left her husband. Nikolai assures her that he'll return home immediately, but his plans are interrupted when he's told that someone is looking for him. Nikolai heads to a restaurant where he's informed that the memory chips they'd stolen belong to the Russian mafia. Threatened, he defends himself by striking one of the men with a teapot and spears the other as he escapes. Calmly, he instructs his subordinates to stage an accident and dispose of any incriminating evidence. Despite their reluctance, Nikolai walks away and makes his way home. Meanwhile, Victor calls in a favor, requesting assistance in taking care of some animals. As night falls, Nikolai finally arrives home, where Zoya anxiously awaits. He confesses that he's just taken someone's life. Still, Zoya finds solace in his arms, and Nikolai assures her that nothing bad will happen to them. During an important speech for the World Expo, Victor goes on a tangent about the press of good and evil in everything. Despite his passion, the reporters are more interested in the details of the Expo itself. This leads the minister to mention black budgets and the underground activities within the ministry, leaving the audience in shocked silence. Then, the minister walks alone in the corridor, seemingly talking to Xiao while he casually pretends to end his life for righteous reasons. Meanwhile, Nikolai and Zoya are having an intimate moment when he's told that his horses are dying. After he confirms the terrible news, they see Zoya's mask nailed to the stable door. Knowing that this is payback from Victor, Nikolai lashes out at Zoya and evicts her from his property. In Anna's home, she believes that she and Mitya can't grow any closer. The podcaster states that if they face their attraction directly, it will be like a tidal wave crashing upon them. Remembering Taya's words, Anna suggests parting for 20 years, and Mitya agrees as he shields her from a falling mattress. Later, at Victor's residence, he receives a call from a superior expressing concern over his mention of black budgets in his speech. As a consequence, the minister is forced to take a leave of absence from his duties. 
The next day, Mitya's game show features two contestants with differing governmental ideologies. Maximovich advocates for social stratification, where inequality is justified based on one's role, while Boris supports socialism, advocating for equality among all. Maximovich argues that politics requires new blood, a sentiment shared by Mitya. Because of this, the host discreetly takes a knife and exits the stage. He reappears with three glasses filled with a dark red liquid, raising a toast to new blood, and the three of them consume it together. Shockingly, the host reveals that they just drank his blood, to the horror of everyone present. Unsurprisingly, he's fired on the spot. Meanwhile, Victor collects his personal buildings from the ministry building. On his way home, he extends an invitation to passerby, offering free food at his residence. At the Bolshoi Theater, Nikolai hands over Zoya's runium earring to her brother, and they reflect on the dramatic turn their lives have taken in just two weeks. They part ways as Anna arrives at the theater. The somber couple also bid each other farewell, promising to meet again in 20 years. That night, Victor's house is filled with people enjoying the free food. Among the attendees, Victor encounters Andre, who admits to squandering the money and job that the minister had provided him. Nevertheless, Andre remains optimistic that things will eventually work out. As the night progresses, the dinner descends into degeneracy as people play and mess around while Victor wears his glasses to observe the people all tinged in blue. Unexpectedly, his wife appears. Removed from his position and surrounded by the homeless, Victor sees her return as the fulfillment of his ultimate fantasy. Shortly after that, Zoya's other fantasy also becomes a reality. As the party goers disperse, a man bludgeons Victor until he collapses. In shock, Zoya leaves her deceased husband behind and retreats to take a bath. Meanwhile, in the circulatory system of Russia, Nikolai is warned that the waiter from the restaurant has testified about his murder of the men from the mafia. Consequently, he's forced to escape in an unoccupied semi-truck. Being able to escape like this, he is indeed a lucky devil. Following her bath, Zoya drives off and ultimately ends her life by jumping in front of a train. While the others suffer the consequences of taking advantage of what mission gave them, Anna bides her time in Bombay, assuming control of the restaurant that Taya left. Occasionally, she visits Mission, still captivated by the radiant beam of light it captures. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.